Hello friends, so this is going to be a short video in which I will be showing you some reduction tips in cases of neck femur with posterior combination. Often there is posterior combination and impaction because of which the reduction is often difficult that I'll be showing you in the coming slides. So we'll be seeing what are some simple tips that can help you out in such scenarios. So you see this x-ray, it appears to be quite simple. There is varus reduction and you see some combination is here. But often we don't get a true lateral view in these cases because often it is painful and sometimes it is difficult to obtain because the patient is not cooperative. So a CT is an investigation which should be preferred whenever there is neck femur fracture because we don't want further manipulation of the neck femur that can result in further injury to the critical vasculature around the neck femur. So you see the CT here. We start seeing fragments here. There's posterior combination here. This anterior, this posterior, you see some impaction is here. The bone has been impacted and there are some fragments also. And as we go more in fear, we start seeing a free fragment also here, here as well. So there appears to be posteromedial combination here. So what will happen when we obtain reduction? So we have obtained reduction in AP view. It is slight varus. We should not be bothered about that because that can be corrected by slight abduction. At this stage, we do not prefer giving extra traction because traction can not only malreduce the fracture, it can also injure the critical vasculature of the neck femur. So first of all, you have to ensure that your lateral view is perfectly aligned. Only then go for the traction. Do not go for the traction with a lateral view inadequately reduced. So in AP view, we are not bothered about this alignment. We are now concerned about the lateral view. So here in lateral view, you see there is huge void here. The impacted bone is here. We have a void here and a small fragment because of the combination is here. And anteriorly, there appears to be some overriding. And anteriorly, there is some opening here and translation as well. So what we usually do, we try to reduce the fracture in internal rotation because we want the anterior cortex to be perfectly matching because the posterior cortex is combinated so it might not give a good picture. So anterior cortex is critical here. Minor overriding can still be accepted but there should not be cross translation and the hand should not be retroverted. So when we did internal rotation, what was happening? The anterior translation was increasing and the void in the posterior part was more evident. So in such scenarios, a simple technique for reduction is that you can simply external rotate the limb first so that the neck is now facing towards the anterior part like this. Then try to push the trochanter anteriorly by just pushing it with your hand. See my hand is there I'm, I'm, and I'm pushing the trochanteric part anteriorly. By that, this slight posterior sac can be corrected. You see the neck has now come in line with the anterior cortex. The anterior margins of the neck and the anterior margin of the proximal fragment that is the head fragment are almost at the same level. You can titrate it further by giving more push anteriorly. And the moment it is aligned, you just try to rotate it internally again. And simultaneously you have to check for the AP view also. If it is perfect in AP view, then it's fine. But if it is slight varus like we see here, what we can do? You can simply abduct the limb like this. Slight opening in this part should not be an issue because that can be corrected by getting compression with dynamic hip screw. So here you see we are performing that maneuver. So here you see we are going to perform that maneuver because there is posterior sag here. We have now done the external rotation. The neck is still sagging posteriorly. Then we had tried to give anterior push. See earlier this was the position. Now this is the position. By giving the anterior push through the trochanteric area, we are able to align the cortices to almost at the same level. And at this point, what we need to do, we are going to give internal rotation. You see here, we are trying to give in rotation. While we were able to align it to a near approximate extent, the sag still happened. You see the anterior cortex is still overriding and it is significant. That means because of the void here, the huge void of posterior combination, the anterior cortex is not able to interdigitate. So these are the unstable injuries in which the anterior push maneuver may not help. But otherwise, if the combination is not extensive one, you can simply use this maneuver and in that maneuver, the anterior cortex will interdigitate and that will hold the reduction in internal rotation. But here it's not happening. So we have to try for some other thing. You see here the void is still visible here. This huge part is the void. And because of this void, the fracture is unstable, still translating or sagging posteriorly. So this is a tip that I want to show you in this case. 
what you can do you can simply feel for the trochanteric area pass a long pointed artery forceps or you can use kelly's forceps also that can be slid along the posterior cortex of the neck you have to ensure in ap and lateral view that you are going along the direction of the neck so you see the posterior part is already injured and we are going through that area only we are not disturbing any of the intact cortices part we are going through the zone of combination and it will be easy to pass the artery in this zone and once we have passed this artery you see here you have to feel for the dip the moment you feel the dip just confirm in the ap view as well whether you are going in the fracture or not the purpose of this artery forceps is to go inside the fracture so you see here we are sliding the artery forceps and we have now entered in the fracture now at this stage you have to externally rotate the limb again the same thing needs to be done you have to externally rotate till the point the neck margins are almost at the margins of the proximal fragment you see here the proximal fragment margin is somewhere here and the neck margin is somewhere here so they are almost at the same level minor translation is still not the issue now at this point you have to push the artery further so then the artery tip is now getting impacted inside the bone of the proximal fragment now here at this stage you may think that the fracture is reduced now why are we struggling the reason i'll show you you see the head fragment is here it is still retroverted when you check for the trajectory of the neck the neck screw will go in this direction that is anterior part and it will be a biomechanically inferior position you have to create a trajectory which is going to end somewhere posterior or somewhere central somewhere here or somewhere here this should not be performed it carries the risk of anterior superior cut out so at this stage when you are already pushing the artery towards the proximal fragment bone you have to do the internal rotation maneuver like here we are doing that maneuver you see the artery is impacted here and we are trying to do the introduction to the point that the anterior cortex is almost flush so here you see we are doing introduction while the artery is preventing the posterior sac because it is getting hold in the proximal segment the anterior cortices are now matching this slight prominence because of the pre-existing bony spur that should not be an issue the aim is to prevent any posterior translation so the artery forceps is now preventing the posterior translation while using the proximal fragment as the fulcrum this artery is getting hold here and this part the long part of the artery forceps is preventing the posterior sac now here you see once we have directed the reduction like this the direction of the neck axis will go somewhere center or you can say slightly posterior you have the option of going slight posterior as well as in the central area and at this point and when you see the contour of the head it will not appear to be retroverted again see the image compared to the previous image previous image it was quite retroverted neck axis was going anterior while head was in posterior part here it is not retroverted because the neck axis is almost in the central part so that has to be performed now at this point once you are sure that the reduction is satisfactory what you can do you can pass a 2.5 mm key wire in the area where you feel the combination is there so the wire has to be in the posterior part because we want to stabilize the combination part if you place the wire here the void will still remain here and still the wire can slightly angulate so better to place the wire through the area of the combination or you can say the most unstable area you can add few more wires also if the bone is weak you can transfix the head through the distal fragment and the acetabulum as well if required but in most scenarios the wire through the zone of combination to the head is sufficient now there is another trick when the combination is extensive better try to keep the implant in the zone of combination we want to preserve as much bone as possible in case of comminuted fractures if you try to create a void here that means in the anterior half then you are creating an extra void in addition to the posterior void because we have a void here now after inserting the screw we have created a void here also so ultimately we are destroying the bone stock so the healing is going to be impaired so better to put the wider implant through the zone of commission utilize the zone of commission we already have a void here so better to use that void and also since the bone was impacted here the bone was already impacted in the zone so that is going to help you in getting better hold compared to the anterior part so so in my opinion you have to place the sliding hip screw in the zone of commission that means the posterior part while for the anterior part you can place the derotation screw 
in the anterosuprior part that won't be an issue but the bigger screw should be placed in the zone of combination so you see here the reduction appears to be good we have rather achieved some intraoperative compression you see some overriding has happened but that is going to help in early healing because the bone ends are now having good compression at the end you are barely seeing the fracture in this zone because of the good compression that has been achieved you see the impression has been happening here in ap view also we are not able to delineate the fracture properly because of the good compression the screw that has been placed here is a solid cancel screw fully threaded one it's optional whichever screw you prefer but we use these screws as positional screw we, we obtain good amount of compression and after that we place this screw so this screw is going to be a positional screw only it is not going to give any compression it is rather going to hold your reduction avoid this screw when you are still having gap at the fracture side somewhere here because otherwise this screw is going to block the compression at the fracture site in that scenario a cancellous cannulated screw should be appropriate but when you have achieved good compression at the fracture site and your fixation is stable then better to go for a fully threaded screw that will secure your reduction so this short video was intended only to show you the technique when there is huge void in the posterior part that is that is hampering your reduction if you have any queries you can just put those in comments thank you